G'day Guardians, Rogi here, welcoming you to join us as we delve deep into the Devil's Lair. Sepix Prime, the overgrown servitor with his own metal theme song. My fire team has gotten pretty comfortable running the double Phoenix Protocol Warlock alongside my Omnioculus Hunter, so he figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As for weapons, this time around I'm running Succession, Vex Mythoclast, and Threaded Needle. Matt, our resident divinity player, also using Blinding Ignition and Seventh Seraph Saw. Mr. Cryptic had Wither Horde, Gnawing Hunger, and a Reed's Regret. Flying into this nightfall drops you smack bang in the middle of a conflict between the Fallen and the Hive. Now, if you're going for speed clears here, you can Sparrow straight down the guts, bypass that first champion to make some really good time. But be prepared to make a few trips back to orbit, as any enemy with half a brain will just one-shot you off your Sparrow. If you're going for clean clears, making use of blinding or smoke bomb and running up to the left side is easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. Like I said earlier, you can skip this first champion and still get platinum. The next skirmish between our Elixni brothers and the Hive is a short-lived one. Surprise these poor dregs, set up a firing line for those incoming thralls and then turn your attention onto the champion. We found that if you're quick, you'll be able to stagger that knight with a quick precision shot allowing for you, with the help of Divinity of course, to take him down without the barrier ever going up. Continue on down the hallway. As we enter this next room, again, a small face-off taking place. Being the only player with a solo weapon, I went left to take out the wizard, while the other two went right, ending this brave Overload Captain story. Press forward into the next barrier champion, who, much like his predecessor, can be staggered and wiped clean from existence without any hassle. What are these Fallen and Hive fighting over, you may wonder? Well, what started out as a dispute over the taxation of trade routes in the Cosmodrone between the Fallen and the Hive has exploded into an all-out war. Multiple shielded enemies on both sides of the fight, Fallen sporting an Ark and an Overload Captain, and the Hive, an Ark Knight, and a couple of Solar Wizards. This is where we typically have our first well ready and use it on the catwalk just to our right allowing us to position aggressively and quickly bring an end to the fighting, restoring peace to our galaxy. For the next couple of seconds anyway, find yourself a safe spot and set up shop. We typically hide next to this derailed train car as it provides a good amount of cover and forces the enemies out into the open. Here, you'll be fending off against four to five waves of enemy, mostly fallen, but Bungie have snuck in a cheeky little hive attack just for us. The first wave will mainly comprise of Vandals, but they will be backed up by a single Overload Captain, Thin the Herd, and Divinity the Captain. There will also be a cowardly Arc Shielded Captain, hiding towards the opposite side of the room to us. You'll need to deal with it eventually, or else a Hive wave will not spawn. Try and get your player with Arc damage to take it out without overextending. Throughout this encounter, make sure you're rotating those Well of Radiance, making use of Phoenix Protocol. The next wave features an abundance of shanks, with a couple of explodies thrown in, just for good measure. Once all the fallen have fallen, the hive want a chance at taking us down. You'll know the hive wave is about to kick off because the music turns it up a notch. A few thrall will spawn on the door to our left, backed up by a couple of wizards. Once the second wizard has cast its last spell, immediately three knights appear. One barrier and two arc. Deal with this third amigo the same way you dealt with the others. Pay more attention to the Arc Knights, honestly, as those guys pack a punch. This is about the halfway mark of this encounter, and where we bid farewell to any more Hive in this nightfall. The next two waves are relatively similar to the first, with the only change being a Zerg rush of Vandals that can quickly surround and overwhelm if you're caught off guard. I'll typically rain down the battlefield with Shadow Shots to tether and slow any advancing foes. Take out the last few overloads that also join their way into the fight, and to the victor goes the spoils of war. In this case, hopefully, some heavy ammo bricks. You'll have the pleasure of walking through about 20 to 30 spider mines to retrieve them, though. Through the next hallway, we'll run into what appears to be a group of fallen, oh, right in the middle of nap time. Unfortunately for them, a captain is also there, gatekeeping our platinum medal. As we step foot back into the daylight in the Spider Tank Arena, we'll first need to vanquish a Barrier Servitor and his entourage of Vandals, all equipped with line rifles. Another fight, another well. Once destroyed, position yourself atop the building and get ready to take down the Spider Tank. Destroying the tank quickly is vital to a quick and painless clear of this area. 
failing to do so will result in numerous skips flying overhead, dropping off additional reinforcements. So squash that spider quick. Look, I'm Australian. I'm used to dealing with deadly spiders on my walk to school. This tank ain't nothing. Next, we'll turn our attention to the Briggs. Keep your distance, team fire, and don't give them an opening. Make your way up the left side of the map, using Well of Radiance to reinforce your position. Having succession in this fight really helps to thin out the Vandals from afar. As we keep making our way forward, there'll be a few champions huddled together, blocking your way forward. You know what to do. Into the lair of the devil itself. Sepix Prime lies in wait, unbothered, shielded, happy in his lane, but not for long. A small army stands guard, two overload champions and the usual suspects of Vandals and Dregs. Once cleared of allies, Sepix disengages his defences and drops down his shield. Sepix of course is damage gated and requires you to complete three DPS cycles. The first one, pretty easy to proc, drop down a well, activate divinity and burn that first third of HP. He'll employ some evasive maneuvers, teleporting around the map and whatnot, but position where we did and you'll have no trouble dealing that damage. Warlocks, keep coordinating whose turn it is to drop a well and you'll be able to maintain 100% uptime. Once Sepix hits his first damage gate, four void shielded servitors will appear. I like to use Shadow Shot to quickly break their shields, allowing for the fire team to pick them off with ease. During this fight, you're going to be constantly swarmed by adds. Take some time to clear out a few if you ever feel you might be overrun. If you do mess up your well rotation or suffer an unlucky death, there is a room to the left that you can use to take cover, helping you to regain your footage. Make sure you are killing the champions during the madness that is this boss fight. Two overload captains, I believe, as taking down Sepix first will result in a goal. Another damage gate, another set of four void shielded servitors. Take them down, same as before. Once that last damage gate has been procced, it's just a straight DPS fest. Use everything in your arsenal to finish off Sepix and claim your reward. If you missed out on getting yourself an Adept Plug 1 or Azumu last season, now's your chance. Keep an eye out for that Feeding Frenzy and Reservoir Burst Plug 1, and of course, a Triple Tap Vorpal Azumu. Happy hunting, Guardians. As always, I'll see you in the next one.